This is not the best way to make a movie of my real-time ray traced graphics, but it's the best way to film an explanatory video. And I want to explain what we have here. I have written a real-time ray tracer, and it's running on an operating system called A2, formerly known as Blue Bottle, formerly known as AOS. A2 running and the tracer running and I have a great big window with six hundred by four hundred rays, not all of which are being traced according to the edge detector in this window, and a frame rate of about eight hundred milliseconds, seven hundred and fifty milliseconds. And I have a smaller window on the same space, which is 200 by 150 rays, not all of which are being traced according to the edge detector. And that goes much faster, a uh, frame rate of about 80 milliseconds. And this all is done using the CPU, it's all done in software, this algorithm really can't be accelerated using the GPU because of the way the GPU access me accesses memory. But what I want to show is, having seen that, I uh, VNCized the tracer. And what that means is I integrated it with Thomas Fry's old VNC Tetris. So that it now serves raw images over a VNC and accepts back key and mouse events. So I'm going to show you this exact same world over locally networked VNC on Linux. It doesn't, by the way, do JPEG compression yet. So it's only only practical over local network. Now I'm going to run the command over on Linux. I've started the render server. This is a mere renderer. We'll quit out of that. I've started the render server over on A2, and on Linux I execute from a terminal GNC viewer 192.168.1.2, that's that A2 machine, local address, colon 99. So I've given the address of the server running on this machine, and I and there we have, now, interestingly enough, we can scale it to full screen and it happens on the GPU on Linux. Now this is the same world that we were looking at on A2. Just briefly, although we'll take a frame hit for this, I'm going to open a VNC terminal onto the same world on A2, and I am going to make some modification by destroying a cube. I'll destroy this one, and when I make changes over on the one system, the world changes on the other system. Very interesting. So, I, I might be getting as many as 10 frames a second here, I'm not sure. The resolution is not amazing, but I have Stupinsky fractals made out of iteratively 
approximated cube sphere truncated thingies and I can on the fly modify the fractality of such so I can get closer and closer and closer or back away and I can destroy individual pieces of the world and because it happens that this world is made up of little copies of the same thing if I destroy one of these white or red cubes it turns out that a lot of cubes in the whole world disappear now it's true that the resolution is not terribly good here but it would be completely hopeless to do this with the polygon render there would be absolutely no point in even trying uh, to make such a complicated world you notice that I have massive occlusion happening everywhere by occlusion I in a polygon render it would count as overdraw <laughs> it's not overdraw here because you're not overdrawing anything but uh, And uh, it is there's some timing issue I don't understand with VNC. It's it's not as smooth, but uh, that is not running on the best modern multi-core hardware either. Oh, here we have a mirror. I know, but we yeah there was a, there's a mirror. See. Ah, because I'm shooting rays into the world, I'm not using an affine matrix transformation for the structure of the world or of the view. So, I can easily shoot the rays more tightly together, more closer to orthogonal perspective although it's difficult to navigate <laughs> in such a world in such a view or I can fisheye spreading the rays out until the world does that I think there may be a mirror there somewhere Now, if I could shoot about if I could shoot many more rays at many times the frame rate and then devote half the processing power that I was using not to that task but to running and updating the structure of the world, then we would have something really interesting. 